Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the colors. You may take your seats. At this time, we request that you silence all electronic devices and remove your badges as this event is being photographed. Thank you. On behalf of General Dennis L. Vi, the 18th Commanding General of the United States Army Materiel Command, I would like to welcome each of you to the Change of Command Ceremony for the United States Army Security Assistance Command. General Vi will conduct a change of command ceremony in which outgoing commander Major General Mark McDonald will relinquish command to Major General Stephen E. Farman. We are honored to welcome our distinguished guests today. The Honorable Troy Trulock, Mayor of the City of Madison. Lieutenant General David Mann, Commander, U.S. Army Space and Missile Defense Command. Lieutenant General Retired Kevin Burns, Lieutenant General Retired Kevin Campbell. Lieutenant General Retired William Phillips and his spouse Marilyn. Lieutenant General Retired Jim Pillsbury. Lieutenant General Retired Mark Curran. Lieutenant General Retired James Barkley. Former Ambassador Joseph Saloum. Miss Ann Cataldo, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Defense, Exports, and Cooperation. The civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Dr. Joe Fitzgerald. Connie McDonald, spouse of Major General McDonald. Debbie Farman, spouse of Major General Farman. We are happy to have joining us also today members of the McDonald family. Mr. Art McDonald, brother of Major General McDonald and his spouse, Mary Lou. Mr. Gene Meisner, brother of Connie McDonald his wife, Sandy, and their daughter, Rachel. Colonel retired Dale Meisner, uncle of Connie McDonald and his spouse, Lenore. We welcome any other elected officials, active duty and retired general officers, command sergeants major, members of the senior executive service, officers and soldiers who may be in our audience today, as well as many of our friends from industry and our great Department of the Army civilian workforce. We thank all of you for attending. Participating in today's ceremony are members of the Army Materiel Command Band under the direction of CW3 James M. Betancourt. The U.S. Army Security Assistance Training Management Organization Color Guard, led by USASAC's Command Sergeant Major Dana S. Mason, Jr. During today's ceremony, ruffles and flourishes and the General's March will be played, honors to the nation will be rendered, and a change of command ceremony will be conducted. The United States Army Security Assistance Command implements approved U.S. Army Security Assistance programs, including foreign military sales of defense articles and services to eligible foreign governments. Security assistance has been part of international relations for as long as man has been engaging in war. Even the American War of Independence was supported by military assistance from France. Initially, the United States focused on foreign relations for only commercial interests, but the safety of the country and its allies needed a policy of greater scope. In the 20th century, our security was challenged and we found ourselves participating in a growing international munitions trade. The Truman Doctrine in 1947 set the pattern for security assistance to help war ravaged nations economically and to foster democratic ideals. Congress passed the Marshall Plan in 1948, which became a model for distributing foreign aid. The U.S. Army played a major role in that effort. 
The origins of this command date back to 1965, when the functions of supply, maintenance, and logistics merged at the former New Cumberland Army Depot to evolve under several name changes and organizational designations into what we know today as the United States Army Security Assistance Command. USASAC, headquartered at the Stone Arsenal and with the support of the entire AMC family, leads the United States Army Materiel Command's Security Assistance Enterprise and manages the life cycle of security assistance programs and foreign military sales cases to build partner capacity, support combatant command engagement strategies, and to strengthen U.S. global partnerships. Today, USASAC manages more than 5,300 FMS cases, valued more than $172 billion for a wide variety of materiel, services, and training in support of our country's national security objectives. The command also plays a critical role in supporting U.S. government emergency assistance, humanitarian relief, and operations other than war programs, including United Nations peacekeeping operations. After more than 50 years of growth and change, the U.S. Army Security Assistance Command remains proud to be known as USASAC, the Army's face. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the rendering of honors, the national anthem, and the invocation by the AMC Command Chaplain, Colonel Ken Godfrey. The official party for today's ceremony consists of General Dennis L. Vi. 18th Commanding General of the United States Army Materiel Command, Major General Mark McDonald, and Major General Stephen E. Farman. I invite you to pray. Almighty God, it is not a light thing to give you thanks for your grace or to give you thanks for our nation, our army, our allies, and to give you thanks for fine people. I ask your blessings for our brave forces around the world, for our wounded and our grieving. And, O oh God, as we focus this hour on the work of an organization 
that has in its very name the concepts of security and assistance. Lord, we thank you that the mission of these soldiers and civilians reaches around the world to multiply those commodities of security and assistance. Mark and Connie McDonald and their family have contributed much to the Army and to many organizations over the years. I thank you for developing them on, and for them making themselves available to the Army from their days with cannons, and I ask your blessing on their transition to the cabin. Stephen and Debbie Farman today transition within the Army Materiel Command team to continue a legacy of leadership and to extend the nation's influence throughout the world. Lord, please give them and the team your grace, wisdom, and favor. And Lord, I ask your continued oversight on all of us as we synchronize and sustain the delivery of all manner of support to warfighters in their critical missions. In your holy name, I make this prayer. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. At this time, Captain James Green will present a bouquet of red roses to Mrs. Connie McDonald. The red roses symbolize the love and affection that the men and women of USASAC feel for her. The flowers are in full bloom to symbolize that this relationship has grown and developed over the past two years and serve as a simple token to remind her that she will forever be in our hearts and memories. At this time, Sergeant First Class Rodney Kendrick will present Mrs. Debbie Farman with a bouquet of yellow rosebuds. These yellow rosebuds symbolize a new beginning as First Lady of the Army Security Assistance Command. In time, the rosebuds will blossom, as will her relationship with the soldiers, civilians, and their families. The heritage of our armed forces began more than 200 years ago when citizens joined together in a common cause, the quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The change of command is a time to honor part of that tradition by formally restating the authority of command. The change of command is a transfer of total responsibility, authority, and accountability from one commander to another. The change of command is a simple, traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. Key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. The official party will now take their positions for the passing of the colors. With the transfer of the colors, the organization's legacy is passed as building blocks for future performance and achievement. Historically, the colors served as the point around which soldiers of the organization rallied as they moved forward into battle. The colors have traditionally been at the side of the commander and were carried forward even when the commander fell. All others within the organization might perish, but the colors and spirit of the unit live on forever. The command sergeant major is the keeper of the colors. The command sergeant major is the spokesman for both the loyalty and concerns of the soldiers and civilians within the command and the principal advisor to the commander. The passing of the colors from the command sergeant major to the outgoing commander signifies his last act of allegiance to that commander. The passing of the colors from the outgoing commander to the senior commander signifies that the command is never without senior leadership. The passing of the colors from the senior commander to the incoming commander signifies the passing of his trust and also the responsibility for the command and its soldiers. The passing of the colors from the incoming commander to the command sergeant major 
signifies the confidence that the commander places in the non-commissioned officers corps and is the first act of allegiance by the command sergeant major to his new commander. By authority of AR 600-20, paragraph 2-3, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Security Assistance Command, effective 2 June 2016. Signed, Stephen E. Farman, Major General, United States Army, Commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the presiding official, General Dennis L. Vi. Thank you. Good morning. I was just speaking to uh, General McDonnell about uh, the change of command two years ago. Much more pleasant day today. You know, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't as, uh, as cool as it is today. And today is cool for those who don't think this is cool. It is cool. But again, thank you all for taking time out of your schedules to be here. And what a beautiful day here in Huntsville, on Redstone Arsenal, here in the Tennessee Valley, for today's ceremony. And to many of our senior leaders, uh, community leaders who've joined us today, thank you so much for being here. Mayor, uh, Mayor Troy Chulock, Commissioner Dale Strong, thanks for joining us as well. General Retired Kevin Burns, Lieutenant Generals David Mann, Larry Weiss, Kevin Campbell, William Phillips, Jim Pillsbury, Mark Curran, and James Barkley, Jim Barkley. Thank you all for taking time out of your schedules to be here today. I know all of you, many of you have worked with Mark uh, throughout his career. Also our civilian aide to the Secretary of the Army, Dr. Joe Fitzgerald, and the former Ambassador Joseph Saloon. Again, thank you all for being here and honoring both of these general officers and their families today. And all of my fellow general officers, active and retired, members of the Senior Executive Service, our Command Sergeant Majors, our Chief Warrant Officers, our soldiers, civilians, our contractor teammates, the representatives that I see uh, from our various nations, our partner nations, thank you for taking time to be here as well and to travel great distances to share this day with us and especially the men and women of the United States Army Security Assistance Command, thank you for attending this important ceremony. To Chaplain Godfrey Ken, that was a wonderful prayer. Thank you for that blessing on this command, these two general officers and their families in this ceremony. As always, Chief uh, Warrant Officer Three Bedcourt and AMC Band, you always add such dignity to these ceremonies. You sound great this morning. And to Command Sergeant Major Dana Mason and the Color Guard, standing here on the field before us today, you look absolutely outstanding and you represent what's all best about our United States Army. <laughs> it's also important to remember that significant events such as this don't happen all by themselves. This is our second ceremony as we promoted, uh, now newly promoted Major General Farman, uh, Steve Farman, just this morning. And it takes the hard protocol staff, the Secretary of the General Staff, and our operations um, to make sure that these events come out in such a positive way. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause again for all the folks who work behind the scenes that make today possible. Today we gather to honor and bid farewell to an outstanding general officer, Major General Mark McDonald, 
and welcome USASAC's new commander, Major General Steve Farman. As would everyone who wears the uniform of a United States Army soldier. We know that the strength behind these two general officers are their families. Major General Mark McDonald's wife of 38 years, Connie, has spent her career devoted to the care and well-being of our Army families. She has been the center, at the center of Army families at every organization that she and Mark have served in and every community they've called home. Wherever our Army needed the McDonald's to serve, Connie has volunteered and sought ways to get involved. From organizations like Army Community Services, the American Red Cross, and many hospital advisory committees, along with chairing on numerous advisory boards for family readiness groups and spouses clubs, the Armed Services YMCA, and the Survivor Outreach Program. So Connie, on behalf of the entire AMC family and the countless Army families that you have touched throughout your and Mark's career, thanks for all you've done. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for Ms. Connie McDonald. We also welcome, and I know they were introduced, but families are always special at these events because there are so many events that families are not able to attend. And so we want to welcome uh, Mark's brother, Art McDonald, his wife, Mary Lou, who drove down from Saudi, Tennessee. Connie's brother, Gene Meisner, and his wife, Sandy, and their daughter, Rachel, all who came from Atlanta, Georgia. And Connie's uncle, Colonel Retired, Dale Meisner, and his wife, Lenore, who traveled from Colorado Springs, Colorado. Thank you all for being here today and making this very special for the McDonald's as well. And thank you for your service, sir, as well. We also welcome Major General Farmer's wife, Debbie, who after serving on active duty herself for 10 years, has been a great role model and mentor for both junior officers and spouses. Personally knowing the challenges of the soldier and the spouse firsthand, Debbie has provided excellent leadership to family and community organizations wherever the farmers have served. From family readiness groups to women's clubs to scholarship committees, she has enthusiastically shared both her time and energy and a few of the unique skills that come with being a military spouse, including teaching other spouses the art of sabrage, a technique for slicing open a champagne bottle with a saber. <laughs> and she even taught me, so she knows how to do that well. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a round of applause for this wonderful family as well. <laughs> and finally, to the men and women, of United States Army Security Assistance Command. Those present at the ceremony today and hundreds of your teammates that are around the world deployed today supporting your mission. Thank you for all, all that you do every day to increase the capability of our allies and partners and for helping to maintain a thriving defense industrial base and for keeping our nation, our Army, and our warfighters strong. Traditions, customs, and courtesies are hallmarks of Army life. And in, a very, in very few events are they so visible, symbolic, and meaningful that a change of command ceremony. And while the ceremony you've just observed represents a change of responsibility between two outstanding general officers, it also represents the deep traditions of our Army. And it reaffirms the responsibility vested by our Army and our nation and the commander. As the colors were passed from Major General McDonald to Major General Farman, so were the history, traditions, and achievements of USASAC. And there are indeed significant achievements. Looking back on Major General McDonald's 36-year career, we see selfless service, we see outstanding results, and we see exceptional leadership. Mark entered the United States Army in 1980 at the height of the Cold War. After earning his commission through the ROTC program, a few miles up the road from here at the University of Tennessee in Chattanooga. Early on, the young artillery officers showed great promise 
and went on to hold the title of commander six times during his career. First as the commander of Headquarters Support Battery, 2nd Battalion, 321st Field Artillery at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Later commanded 3rd Battalion of the 321st Field Artillery. And during the early days of Operation Iraqi Freedom, then Colonel McDonnell was entrusted with the command of Division Artillery for the 82nd Airborne Division. He then held several critical staff positions, including serving as the effects coordinator for three corps from 2006 to 2008, when it was deployed to Iraq during the war's most dangerous era. He played a key role in the plan that brought the sons of Iraq into supporting the Iraq government and then paved the way for the success of the surge. As the Director J3 of Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation New Dawn from 2009 to 2010, another critical period of the conflict, Mark was responsible for the safe and orderly drawdown from 110,000 troops to 50,000 troops in only two months. If you can only imagine the effort that goes in, not alone moving 50,000 soldiers, but all of the equipment and materiel and doing so while in contact. Major General McDonald then held the title of Commanding General through three consecutive assignments. At the United States Army Cadet Command at Fort Knox, Kentucky, he was responsible for nearly 33,000 cadets in ROTC programs at 275 host universities and more than 1,000 partnership universities nationwide. The United States Army Fire Center of Excellence at Fort Seal, Oklahoma, where he held the title of Chief of Army Artillery. And finally here at the United States Army Security Assistance Command, where he has had a remarkable tenure overseeing Army foreign military sales in over 150 countries. Major McDonald's leadership in USASAC has resulted in significantly improved U.S. partnership capacity throughout the free world. Increased foreign military sales, increased focus on the sales of excess defense articles, and has generated more than $38 billion in new business since his arrival. He oversaw active FMS cases in support of 158 nations, and in 2015 alone, USASAC managed more than 5,300 FMS cases valued over $172 billion. His thoughtful leadership and innovative thinking has greatly improved FMS operations across the enterprise and has increased the efficiency and effectiveness of delivering equipment and support of our geographic combatant commanders engagement strategies. This has not only helped to build partner capacity and strengthen our global alliances, but it provides the means to support our Army's critical organic industrial base. The amazing work Major General McDonnell has done here at USASAC and throughout his stellar career will continue to impact our Army and the lives of our soldiers for many years into the future. Mark will hold a separate retirement ceremony at Fort Sill later on this month where it all began for he and Connie. So Mark, until then, to you and Connie on behalf of the United States Army and the men and women of the United States Army Materiel Command, the United States Army Security Assistance Command and the hundreds of thousands of warfighters and allies you supported throughout your career. Thank you for all you've done. Lynn and I wish you both Godspeed as you begin this next chapter in your lives. We know it'll be an exciting chapter, wherever it happens to be in Tennessee Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a huge round of applause for the McDonald's. Command Sergeant Major, please uh, put your troops at ease. It is now my privilege to introduce and welcome the new command team of the United States Army Security Assistance Command, Major General Steve and Debbie Farman. Major General Farman has a wealth of experience in key command and staff positions. He commanded Delta Company of the 407th Supply and Transportation Battalion and then Delta Company 
of the 782nd Maine Support Battalion, both in the 82nd Airborne Division. Major General Farman then commanded the 28th Transportation Battalion from 2004 to 2005 and deployed the unit to Operation Iraqi Freedom and later commanded the 598th Transportation Brigade stationed in the Netherlands. After serving as the Chief of Transportation and the Commandant of the United States Army Transportation School at Fort Lee, Virginia, he became the Commanding General of the 19th Sustainment Command Expeditionary in Korea. The Foremans joined us from Rock Island Arsenal in Illinois, where Major General Foreman was the Commanding General of the U.S. Army Joint Munitions and Lethality Life Cycle Management Command and Joint Munitions Command. Under his leadership, JMC distributed more than 340,000 short tons of munitions for both the Army and the Joint Force, meeting 100% of the required delivery dates for contingency operations and 99% of delivery dates for training, an outstanding and unprecedented record of achievement. JMC produced $1.6 billion in ammunition during Major General Farmer's tenure and managed an inventory valued at $61 billion, while demilitarizing 69,000 short tons of ammunition. Steve Farman is also very familiar with USASAC's mission. As a JMC commander, he managed a robust foreign military sales program of over a billion dollars in new business lines and $5 billion of total letters of offer. From numerous locations in the United States, to the Netherlands, Germany, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Korea. Major General Farman has proven himself as an effective combat leader who understands complex organizations and a general who knows how to lead and take care of soldiers, our civilians, and their families. Steve is an exceptional senior army leader and is clear that the right commander at the right time to lead USASAC into the future. Steve and Debbie, welcome. We sincerely appreciate your continued service to our nation. Congratulations on your promotion to Major General. And I'm confident that USASAC will thrive under your strong leadership. Linda and I look forward to serving with you both. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm Redstone Arsenal and Tennessee Valley welcome to the Farmers. Again, my sincere thanks to everyone for attending today's ceremony and for honoring these two great general officers and their families. May God continue to bless our deployed men and women, the civilians and families who support them, the men and women of the U.S. Army Security Assistance Command, and may God continue to bless our great Army and the United States of America. AMC sustaining the strength of the nation. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Major General Mark McDonald. Well, what a great morning. I got in my notes, the sun's out, the heat's up, but it's not, and that's wonderful. We're very happy about that. And welcome to our distinguished guests and everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. General Vi, two years ago, I indicated that you were taking a lot of extra risk taking me on in this command. So far, it appears I was wrong, but then again, something might be happening right now. <laughs> Seriously, sir, thanks so much for affording this fantastic opportunity to lead a great organization and continue to serve our nation. I thank you very much. So what does a person talk about on a day like today? Could be anything. But I think I'm just going to focus on a couple things. Thanks and pride. So for the rest of my comments, these two words will apply. First of all, for all of you being here and being in this area, it brings great pride and tremendous thanks. This entire Tennessee Valley is so supportive of our military efforts and you all give us tremendous pride, and we're honored to be part of your community. And then USASAC, what an organization. You know, in all of my career, I've worked in organizations 
where 20% 20 of the people are doing about 80% of the work. And I think most of you will recollect back and you'll, you'll see the same thing. But I gotta tell you, in USASAC, everybody's pulling their weight every day. 80% of the people are doing 80% of the work and that other 20%, they're doing the other 20%. They're getting it all done. I've never been in an organization as professional as this. And you heard the, you heard the statistics, 153 countries, 5,300 cases, large dollar value. Each case has got about 300 steps or twists and turns where something could go wrong. So that's 300 times 5,300. And you all know what commanders do, we solve problems. And this is the easiest job I've ever had because we almost have no problems. And when we do, these professionals that work in this organization get on it, fix it, it's truly phenomenal. And we're all about building partner capacity with our allies. And from what I just told you, we're doing a lot of it. It brings me back to the pride and thanks that I have a ton of for both of these organizations that work together, and I'm about to mention several of them. The folks from USASAC, as well as the other organizations that work this together. It's a really, it's a team effort. So for the specific thanks, let's start with the band, the color guard, and all the folks that made this ceremony possible. Let's give them one more round of applause, please. And then inside USASAC, we've got our regional operations directorates. That includes our division chiefs, our country program managers, desk officers, case managers, everybody that gets involved in the nuts and bolts of every piece of every action that we do. It's unbelievable how they execute, and uh, obviously we couldn't do it without them. It's kind of like being a general contractor. They don't build anything, they don't shingle a roof, but they pull everything together, and it's very complicated. And then to our G staff, nobody ever thanks the G staff. Everybody just blames the G staff. But I gotta tell you, what, what this staff does is sets all of our organizations up for success. Uh, they don't say no, they say yes, they make it happen, and if they can't say yes, they come to one of us to get the resources so we can say yes. Truly phenomenal, exactly what a G staff should be doing. Our separate directors, we cannot operate without you, and phenomenal performance. For, for example, our CIO. Our videographer cannot be here today, Rick Bumgardner, because he's receiving the number one award in the Department of Defense for, for video broadcasting. He's simply that good, and that's the way all the rest of our directorates are. We've got a whole section at New Cumberland, about 250 people. They're, they're sprinkled in through all these organizations I talk about, but they execute, and they work with our security assistance liaison officers there to make sure things go seamlessly. SATMOs at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, at any time they're involved in upwards of 40 countries, maybe 170 team members, sometimes one and two people in austere locations, the only U.S. Army soldiers in countries representing us well, and they never, never have problems. And we've got two major programs in Saudi Arabia. We've got the Ministry of National Guard, and we've got now the Ministry of Interior Military Advisory Group. Uh, Ambassador Joe Saloom joins us here from State Department. He's the point man for that program. Both of those programs with one of our very key allies building that capacity and you're seeing that capacity put into work in the southern part of their country. Just phenomenal. We've got a Washington field office that executes basically on the fly the global training and equip monies that come out and you know how our, you know, our Congress meters our money out to us. They'll give it to you in August and it must be spent by September and somehow they do it and they do it well. Each of the LCMCs, Joint Munitions Command, TACOM, CECOM, and AMCOM, they've got a group inside of their organization that works for them, but it ties back into us. The, they're the people that actually build things. They get things put together, they get the material out there. The SAMDs are phenomenal. They're here with us today, we thank you. And of course, we don't do anything without a contract. I have to get a contract to wake up and have breakfast in the morning. And the support that we get out of Army Contracting Command is just phenomenal. So we couldn't, couldn't do it without you. And we've even got folks at Department of the Army and OSD involved in this. Ann Cataldo's here from DASADEC at Department of the Army. Uh, funding and policy from her and Vice Admiral Joe Rixey. What great partners we have up there. And then, of course, our own staff. Phil Chambers, our chief. Nobody ever says anything nice about the chief, 
but the chief does everything and makes sure everything happens properly and leads the staff and he's great. Uh, your special staff as a CG makes or breaks you. And I got to tell you from protocol, admin, legal, and our SGS, thanks so much. Everything you do is phenomenal. And the next group that can really make or break is your personal staff. Sandy, my executive assistant, and James, the aide, you know, they can have everything set up and everything looks calm and fair. And you can have a positive face of USASAC when you call, or it can look the other way. I usually don't use that term, I use something else. But they always are on track, keep things straight, and keep the whole command group in a positive way. And in the command group itself, Bob Moore and Dana Mason. I've never had a group of three that were more in sync and balanced than the three of us. You know, Bob runs the security assistance part. Let's just make no bones about it. He's been doing it for 15 years. He knows every aspect of it. So our Major Mason, the eyes and ears, he's got a finger on the pulse of everything. He travels more than anybody that I know because all these locations we talk about, he's been to. And the three of us together, I've never seen a better command team. So I thank you very much. And then of course our allies, we have many of them here today. We wouldn't even do this business without these great partners that we've got. So thank you so much for joining us today. We don't do this for us. We do it together for you and us, and we very much appreciate you. So you can see why I'm so proud today. As a member of this great team, I could ask for nothing more. But actually, I do have more. I've got a great family. So my brother Art and Mary Lou and their family, they've always been encouraging and supportive. Yeah, even when some parts of my family weren't, and they'll know what I'm talking about. It was very unpopular for me to come in the military and my family. Now, brother-in-law Chip and Sandy and their family, you've always been a mainstay, tremendous support for Connie on the many deployments that I had. And then we got a bonus as uh, Colonel Retired Dell and Lenore Meisner, a two-time, uh, a two-timer here at Redstone Arsenal, a great career. Sir, thank you for joining us. And then of course our children, Lance and Lauren, they're both working today. They'll join us for the retirement ceremony. You know, as a soldier, you always wonder what this different life does to your kids. Well, I just got to tell you, it worked out okay for them because they are both very successful and we're very proud of them. Lance and Lauren and now our granddaughter Edie's in the mix. And we're proud of both of them and their families. And then, of course, Connie, who I actually married two years before the Army. And Con, words won't describe how proud I am of you. First, for raising these two great young adults I talked about. And then for all the care you've shown to soldiers and their families for the last 36 years. I've seen it, it's genuine, and you really do care. And then of course for taking great care of me, even though I wouldn't listen most of the time. So dear, I can't thank you all enough, and I think you all know this because I mentioned it coming in, but I got to mention it going out. Without Connie, I would be a heap of beer-stained denim. So thank you very much. So now you all know why I'm so thankful and so proud. I'm pretty sure there are only two or three folks in the world who have had this many blessings. So again, I thank all of you for your friendship and enjoy working with you all. And then to Steve and Debbie Farman, just hang on. You're going to have a ball. This is a great command. It's a great environment. It's a great community. So enjoy every bit of it because two years will fly by. So I'll sign out with this great phrase that I'll enjoy the rest of my life. Army strong. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Commander of the United States Army Security Assistance Command, Major General Stephen Farman. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. As, as you heard General Vice say, it's already been a very exciting day for uh, Debbie and I, but taking command of USASAC is the icing on the cake, without a doubt, the icing on the cake, and we're very thrilled about that. I'm going to breeze through my remarks very quickly because that's what incoming commanders tend to do. Uh, but I do have a few things I want to say. Uh, an impressive list of dignitaries has already been recognized effectively. So I will not acknowledge everyone again, but simply say I am humbled and honored by your presence here today and look forward to the teamwork ahead. General Vi, thank you for your trust and confidence in me. Rest assured, 
you have my full commitment to the task at hand. Gold Star families, friends, community leaders, colleagues, mission partners, and families of Redstone Arsenal and the Huntsville area, Debbie and I are proud to join the team. What a day it is. The colors on the field and the organizations they represent look amazing and stand as a microcosm of the larger team of USASAC trusted professionals poised to serve as our Army's face to the world, delivering strength in cooperation wherever and whenever it is needed. To Command Sergeant Major Mason and the Satmo Color Guard and AMC Band, thank you both for channeling their spirit today. How about another round of applause for the Color Guard and the AMC Band today? Debbie and I are both humbled, honored and humbled to be in your company and excited for what lies ahead. The opportunity to spearhead such a superb, dynamic team of professionals during these complex and uncertain times is a privilege of immense responsibility, and we do not take that lightly or for granted. For over 50 years, USASAC has been delivering Army materiel, services, and training to our allies and international partners through security assistance and foreign military sales, assuring strategic readiness, building partner capacity, and most recently, adapting our foreign military sales to support warfighting requirements at the point of need, enabling combatant command strategies that are vital to our nation's interests, and bolstering industrial-based resiliency as well. We must never lose sight of these. this, our higher purpose. It is a privilege we are proud to bear. I look forward to cultivating friendships and relationships with all of you and our extended teammates from across Army Materiel Command, the Department of the Army, the Office of the Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Army for Defense Exports and Cooperation, Defense Security Cooperation Agency, our multinational partners, Department of Defense, Department of State, and beyond to achieve this end. Getting our mission right and being our Army's positive an effective face to the world requires a team of teams approach, and we will work to achieve this daily. To my friend and colleague, Major General Mark McDonald, Connie, and their family, you should feel immensely proud of your accomplishments, not just at USASAC, but throughout your illustrious career. You are handing over an exceptional organization with a great reputation, and I am honored to take the baton from you and build on the solid foundation you have worked hard to put in place. Debbie and I can't thank you enough for all you have done to make our transition smooth. You set the tone from the beginning, and it was felt across the organization. Our sincere thanks to you and all. How about another big round of applause to the McDonald's? <laughs> Debbie and I appreciate the warm welcome we have received to date. And we look forward to making more acquaintances and extending our relationships, both operationally and personally, with all our mission partners, to include all the communities, districts, and countries in which our team USASAC serves. For it will take all that and more to handle the velocity of instability we face today and shape the future. To Team USASAC and the entire security assistance enterprise, I say this, if we accomplish anything, it will be because we did it together. Trust plus teamwork equals strength in cooperation. Thank you all for making the time and effort to be part of this ceremony today. It is great to be up on the net. Army Strong. Thank you, General Farman. Ladies and gentlemen, Please stand for the retiring of the colors and then join in singing the AMC song and the Army song. The words are in your program. <laughs> 